Here we are at Mount Dora, and we are here for the last show of the Florida season this year. We are expecting weather again, but not until Saturday. And so we are going to set up and sell tomorrow like there's no tomorrow, because there might not be. Here's the bare bones of my space. And behind you see a bunch of signs and cool stuff from my friends and neighbors from New York. Susan is here setting up. There's also a bunch of YouTubers coming, and I'm sure that I'll get to see most of them because they usually leave their stuff at my booth. And that's one of the great things. People say, well, why don't you do some different shows? And I do plan to do some new shows this year, but the truth is one reason to keep doing the same circuit is because you get to know people. I just made a $650 sale of sterling silver. I brought it specifically for him because he always buys the types of things I set aside for him. I've got another fellow coming for a clock that he's wanted for a long time that I finally got out of storage. So that's one of the reasons we come back to the same show is because we build up a clientele. Okay, folks, it's showtime. It's about 840 in the morning and here we go. So this is the booth and I'm gonna let people shop. We are just starting to get people in because they parked them at the far lot this time. So we will get them as they trickle up here and they are starting to trickle in pretty fast. I'm pretty happy with how the booth came out. I'll try to show you some highlights as much as I have a chance before I get busy here. I have the mirror that is not the Turner Flamingo. There is another Flamingo mirror similar to Turner done by a different company in the 50s and a neat airbrushed piece here signed Roberts likely to be from Hawaii. We are expecting rain tomorrow so I tried to put things out that were rainproof although we will cover up the stuff and I thought this was a fun group of modernist looking stuff. Well we've already seen a few hundred dollars more of stuff go out in just the last five minutes so I'm going to try to film quickly so that you at least see some of what I've got. This is Joby Pottery out of Truro, Massachusetts. They made some really cool stuff in the 70s. Not as well known as a lot of the larger pottery studios, but it has a very distinctive signature. Royal Hager here. Someone already inquired about these. The Bjorn Winbod plate. Got some interesting pieces here. The Viking glass, an Italian piece. The Raymore is this piece here, and this is Costa Boda. We sold the Costa Boda face before I had a chance to show you, along with a Tonala bull and a Tonala cat. And they went to these fun viewers here who I haven't met before. And boy, look at his shirt. They were really great, fun people to talk to and love the modernism. Glad I had stuff for them. Well, we had a giant pile of hankies and we just sold $200 worth. And now we have a small pile of hankies. But they're very cute and they came out of an estate in Tampa and were in really nice condition where I didn't have to do any work, which is a pleasure for me because I'm not great on ironing. So we've got a lot of green depression glass that glows under blacklight. A nice collection of children's sewing machines. A little bit of Western. It's a hodgepodge. I really filled the truck as much as I could. We're expecting today to be really good and then weather issues tomorrow and Sunday. So I figured get it all out now and see how we do. But so far we're doing very well. Cute little table here that I got. You'll see a video where I find that in an amazingly dirty junk store <laughs> with a friend of mine. Tried to put out some custard glass because that glows too, and I've been selling pieces at every single show. I'm actually getting a little bit low on it. A little bit of a leak here. I love the face. I believe she's German from before the Second World War. Sold the bleak teapot in the Shamrock, and so I have the coffee pot left. A little bit of an Easter shelf here with the Royal Dalton bunnies and Happy Easter from Mary Hadley little Fenton bunny there, the custard glass. This is a candy container by Jeanette. And in case you're worried about reproductions, well, the originals say somewhere on the edge, we're going to find it. Oh, it's going to make a monkey out of me now, isn't it? Somewhere on this edge, it says Jeanette. Well, you'll have to trust me on that because I can't seem to find it where I can come into view now. And of course, a fun, silly Anna Lee. And then here we have this wonderful marble obelisk. This got all the way to half price at our estate sale. And, you know, I gave it a fair hearing. I did not price it. Actually, a friend of the client priced it. So I figured I'd given everybody their chance. And when it went to half price, I bought it. And here it is. I finally got my little cases in order. So we have all the little pins, comic pins, Kellogg's pins, 
fraternal pins, car badges, little sterling pieces from Canada, shipboard pins, all in one little case there, little charms. This one's segregated a little better, a lot of pens and writing instruments, razors and related things in there in the Gillette cases. For once, I'm using them for actual Gillette products. People just enjoy going through these little cases of little things, and I find that it's something that a lot of people will look at, but especially I notice men will go through these and spend time while the women look at more decorative objects for the home, so it's a nice combination. This is a bunch of World's Fair stuff here, tokens and pins from 1909 Seattle, 1939 New York and San Francisco. The crazy huge heavy brass stingray sculpture has a nice signature on the back, which I'll show you. They made a smaller size of this too. I'm asking $7.95 on this. There's our signature. I have a couple of pieces of Higgins glass, including the little tray there and this Blanco vase here. I'm really low on Blanco right now. I'm yeah. gonna have to go shopping. Did all my Floridiana and John Perry pieces. I had a nice big Tonalab bull here that looked good with this parrot, but the bull has sold as has the cat that was made in Tonalab. The bull was signed Ken Edwards. I think they were very happy to see that piece. So was I when I got it. Still have the Salviati piece and these cool flowers, this 1950s cluster here. This is a signed Puccini bowl, S. Puccini Italian. Love that color. They called it Alabastron. Doing a little fiddling and sorting and repositioning here because we sold some stuff. And then I've got the Sorrento tea cart, which I bought here and I just haven't had anywhere to put it out. So it came back here and we'll see, maybe it'll sell where it came from. I just got this samovar. It's a really neat little individual teapot size. These are usually quite huge, so that was something different. If you folks have any questions, let us know. The hat is Fenton. It's the last one of the hats I have left. I brought the Waterford decanter, which I also bought here last month. I haven't had a chance to take it anywhere else. Some Fenton lime green custard that also glows. I went for pinks on these shells. And I have to admit it was partly because these were nice heavy pieces that will keep this stack of tables in place. Nice looking Fenton basket. These are intended to go to Seattle with me because they're Starbucks and I have a mall space at Lander Street Vintage, which is one block from the Starbucks International Headquarters in Seattle. But well, I haven't been there yet. So I thought, well, if someone buys them here, then I'll take something else to Seattle. Another Sorrento piece, the little music box table here in the back. Lots of Swarovski miniatures. I still have some nice compacts. And then the jewelry. Tried to rearrange the jewelry cases a little bit. We have a lot of fall colors for people here. I like this enameled piece. This is a nice old circa 1910 pin. The Owl is a fun 60s piece. Still have some Renoir and Matisse. Still have a little bit of Second World War celluloid jewelry. The tank is a cool one. And then a bunch of JJ. I've got some JJ in gold in another place. And then here's this jewelry case. I still have some of the little silver perfume bottles and I'm filming this in part because I have a request for them from one of our viewers. So I'm going to show what's left. Just got this piece, the amber and citrine. That is rhinestone and that is Kramer of New York. And that's a nice big showy piece. Kramer is very popular in the market right now. I had some nice turquoise. I still have a few pieces left, but I did sell some this morning already. It's actually been very busy. We're only one hour into this show. This is a nice enameled filigree piece that I just got. So, we are having some fun, I'll tell you. A lovely young lady is going to take the tray that these are in, so we will take those. And fortunately, I have one more display I can put them in. So she gets the tray and I'll put them in a regular Riker mount. All right, let's see what the back wall looks like. I have oddities and funky fun things here because I just sort of needed a place for them after I did all the pretty stuff. 
This is a Burley Winters face, this green one. This is the first time I've had that out. Burley Winters is often not marked, but it was made in Ohio. That is the original $2 price. They sometimes will have those inscribed numbers on the bottom, but they tend to do, do that speckled mottled glaze. For you fairy lamp collectors, now these are more common ones by Tiara, but the prices are low. And here is, even though it's in clear, the original box when they were calling them angel lights back in the early 70s at Indiana Glass. Fairy lamps are the old term that came up in Victorian England, and that's what we call them now. We need to take a minute and bag this very pretty Fenton Panther piece, which is going with its new owner. Well, the flamingo mirror is gone. I'll see if I have anything else in the car to put in its place. We'll hang these mola back up where they belong. And I'm curious to see what one of our visitors today has to say about the molas because that one I bought with her in Ohio. My friend Nancy just brought me this. It's a pin that she made. It's repurposing and it's so much fun and it reminds me of a dear friend of mine who is no longer with us who I miss very much from the show. That is going in the car, not for sale. These pretty little garnet pins are going, and these are nice old ones. You can see this doesn't have a safety catch, so it is truly Victorian. And this one as well. Very pretty little early garnet pieces. Garnets were very popular in the 1890s to about 1910. Oh, that's really cool. I love the fish. You are really getting into the enamel, aren't you? Oh, it's an Anne Marie Davidson. Very nice. That is good. Yeah, she she trained with a bunch of people out in um, California and then went off on her own and was really successful with it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. How much was that? Five. <gasps> wow, what a bargain. Hundred. No, just <laughs> And then I bought this just for fun. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. A little bling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I do too. I really like that. If you want to wear it, the wrong. colors are fun. Yeah, I probably need it. My pants are falling off. <laughs> One interesting thing when you're doing a show is what happens when you sell your displays. And I just sold this set of nesting tables, so now I'm going to have to figure out where to put everything. One thing I tell people is come back and show me what you bought. And I really mean it. I really enjoy seeing what other people collect and what other people have because I can't get around to shop at the show. So you guys coming by and showing me the stuff you find when you're here, well, oh, that's my vicarious thrill of getting to shop the show with you. Now, I've sold a bunch of stuff, but boy, I have so much stuff and I have to find some place for all of the stuff on these stands. So, we're going to start rearranging a little bit. And this is why, if you are at a show and you see something and you say, I'm going to come back and it's not there, ask the dealer. They may have had to move it around. It doesn't just stay static the whole show. Wow, what a burst that was. I had a whole bunch of viewers come all at once, which was really exciting, and they bought, and a whole bunch of new folks bought, and they all talked to each other and got to know each other, and I think we've got a few new members of our community, but I also have a bunch of stuff to move around because the kidney-shaped 1950s table is sold, so all of that has to find a new space. However, I also sold a whole bunch of glass, including a bunch of Fenton custard. I sold a quilt. I have some room. I'll have to do our first celebrity sighting while they have their heads down and don't know that I'm doing it. But there's Sandy from My Flippin' Van Life and Dagny from Flying Pig Thrifts. Hi there. I'm so glad you found your way here. Oh, we were so glad to find you. Yeah, well, I also see uh, carts full of stuff and you said you already took a trip to the car. I got a stretch. Well, she found a stretch class thing. Ooh, did you really? Oh, that's nice found a small child mannequin. Oh, that sounds disturbing and interesting because Kate loves disturbing and interesting. She's over there. She got distracted by the Oh, I have to go say hi to her and see if she has that where we can see it. Excuse me, ma'am. I understand that you abducted a small child. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Is it here or did no, you already take it in the car? It's not air conditioning. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, it's <laughs> Oh, that's so it's cool. Fabulous. I can't wait to see it. Picture. Yes, I would love to see a picture. Can I show a picture? Yes, Sorry, Norm, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Oh, my goodness. It, oh, yes. It's got the legs and the arms, but we took it off for a carrying purpose. That is so morning. cool. It's pretty good. Oh, that's awesome. This is Kate from Follow That Bug Vintage, if Hi. you don't already know. <laughs> well, the lovely Sandy is... She found a couple of things, and uh, tell me what you got and what you like about it. I got this beautiful Mexican folk art bird, but the best part, it's a bird on a bird. A bird on a bird, exactly. Put a bird on it. Bird on a bird. That's awesome. And then this is a beautiful Costa Boda. 
I do like that color. Isn't that neat? The color and the it's the shape they did it for. The shape is interesting. Yeah, it's like a minaret. It looks sort of like a Middle Eastern uh, building or something. I just love that shape too. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you. I'm so glad I had something for you. Love it. Kate is rocking the Coke bottle lens folding glasses. I'm so excited you got those. I just love those when I found them. Me too. I'm very disturbed by how good I can see in them. <laughs> oh, I'm very disturbed that you've been driving down the roads and didn't know that. <laughs> Sandy <Yeah>. drove me. <laughs> <laughs> Great thing about lorgnettes is look how this folds down. It yeah. takes a little bit of... It's an art, yes. You have to do it all the way around and then around it. Oh, you did it right the first time. It took me a few. Awesome. And they fit in that little thing so you could keep them in your purse and use them at the opera. Fabulous. Fabulous. The Rockettes. The Rockettes. Exactly. More fun. <laughs> Thank goodness we've got some empty spaces. Yes, and a John Perry flamingo, right? That's fabulous. Yeah, a lot of people don't know they did flamingos, but I think they're really great. I've only seen this one time and it was at Sandy's house. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had one that was a big one with three on it, and I decided to keep it. So you're No Way Vintage, and what uh, platform are you on? I am on Etsy and eBay cool. and Instagram. Awesome. Oh, so Instagram is where yes. I find your uh, newsletter. Yes, oh, that's awesome. absolutely. Cool. Oh, well, we'll look for that. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. $20 for the pair. Damn. Wow, that is a real deal. And they're deal. in good shape. I mean, they just need some dusty... Oh, yeah, but little... they've got all the pebbles. That's yeah, the important Yeah, that's what part. I mean. And it's a good theme that's really strong that you can tell. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And you sell in the Carolinas? Yeah, Franklin, North Carolina. Oh, wonderful. And then this salty, oh, wow. Texas. Sure, real world shows are work, but it is such fun work because you get to meet all these people who love the antiques and vintage like you do and have such a great experience together. Wow, the stuff is just flying out of here. Everyone came today because it's supposed to rain tomorrow and so whew, have we been busy. And we have some fun people in the background. We're going to introduce you to the most important people in this group. One is Pretzel and this one's Rocco. And then I guess we should show you who is here as well as the dogs. <laughs> Hi, Jocelyn. Nice to see you. Hi, Kat. Nice to see you. We are having a lot of fun. And um, yeah, you all should be here. Sorry you missed out. Hello. My first Alaska customer in Florida. <laughs> and you say you sell there. I do. What's the name? Blue Door Antiques. Blue Door Antiques yeah. in Fairbanks, Alaska. Yeah. It's on my bucket list. Awesome. <laughs> I wanted to show you this booth because, first of all, it is full of interesting stuff. Hi there. <laughs> I'll be back in my booth in a minute, I promise. And secondly, because hello there, I wanted to introduce you, since we might have wet weather tomorrow, these folks came down from Albany, New York, and boy, did they bring the stuff. And I just wanted to introduce you to everybody. And uh, do you want and just cleaning some things here. Yes, and I'm sorry, tell everybody your name if you would. I'm Megan and this is Matt. Hello there, it's great to meet you. I got to meet you earlier and it's really good to see you again. I just wanted to come and show everybody that you made this big okay. trip down here. Today's a beautiful day. We'll take it. We usually don't have so much rain as they're expecting tomorrow, but it looks like you've sold a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I keep pulling it out. We don't even have the trailer on. <laughs> wow. Back too. Wow. Oh my gosh, look at all this. Well, <laughs> they get stuff from, uh, you get stuff from all over the place, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is just an amazing amount. I thought I brought a lot to a show. This is very impressive. I'm a little worried about the, the hurry, the pickup tomorrow at what, what you know, when you <laughs> <laughs> about picking up tomorrow yeah exactly i would say put the stuff that can get wet out and put the other stuff back that's what i'm going to do but you know what you might just sell it all today yeah, that would be from nice. what i hear you're doing very well yep. i'm so glad that's very exciting well thank you for letting me introduce you and i'm going to take a look for a minute right. thanks George. these are some neat pink depression glass pieces all sorts of good patterns this is adam from the 1930s this is called doric you'll also see it with pansies in here and that's called Doric and Pansy. Kind of obvious, I guess. Here's some Adam grill plates. Grill plates are where you separate the pieces with divisions. And a lot of people who have kids find this useful because you know how kids can be about, I don't want my food to touch my other food. This is American Sweetheart, a very pretty pattern. And then, gosh, they've just got a whole bunch of fun stuff. They said that they have done thousands of dollars of business. And I can see why. Look at their prices on these. These are Blendo and they are the cocktail glasses. They be they were probably sherbets originally, but now I would think we would use these for margaritas. And they're seven dollars each. That's a good deal. I might have to take those back to my space with me. 
what else do we see here? Just a lot of fun. This is an interesting piece of blown glass. It is not Blanco. It's not Rainbow, but it is blown. It's from that era. There were a lot of other smaller American studios at that time, and I'm not sure who that particular one was. And then they have Christmas and holiday and all that stuff. They apparently do a lot of um, everything from storage lockers to taking on estates that people are not able to sell in their home. So they have a big selection. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse up there. Snoopy in Woodstock. Se habla espanol, I'm trying to learn myself. Look at that fantastic print in that dress. So they're having fun and they said they have done really, really well. I won't share their numbers, but they made some numbers. So have I. It's been a very good show, even though it's only the first day. This is Pilgrim Glass. Pilgrim Glass did a lot of glass animals. The satin glass whale is priced at 25. These are really nice. This is New Martinsville glass, which became Viking glass, which is why it's that same bright ruby red as the compote I sold earlier. Same company, later era. These were done in the 1930s or early 40s, and the Viking name didn't come about until 1945. Oh, this is really fun. Yes, I'm right over there. I was like, oh, there we are, unload the trailer. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yes, I got you in the background. These are really fun, actually, and I like you use a lot of old barn board and stuff so that it's like repurposing in a different sense, yep. but really fun graphics. Who does all the painting? That would be me. Wow. Oh, that's really fun. Oh, you do a great job. I could I could live with a lot of this stuff. This is how I decorate, and this is very Florida. Yeah, we've had a good show. Oh, I'm not surprised. It's been really good so far. Yeah, I think everybody came out today because they're afraid of the rain. Yeah. And so TAS. Um, Tammy Ann Shortnessy. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Where can they find these when you're not here? Um, at Tammy Ann Art. Tammy Ann Art. Excellent. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you. I'm glad you caught me uh, walking by. It's so funny you're watching me on the phone. <laughs> watching your videos now. Oh, cool. Well, that's great. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, thank you. Fun vehicles show up at antique shows, too. And this one is especially great. R2-D2 is coming out of the top, and we have a Stormtrooper. I think that means you can use the HOV lane. Well, I am shopping in my neighbor's booth now, because this is about as far away from mine as I can get. And look at these heels. Oh, my gosh. Those are great. They are not vintage, but they sure look vintage. Great look for 28 bucks. They have a lot of purses, and I am running low on purses, and they have a very good price on this Lucite box purse here. $75. This one's right out of the 1960s with that amber base. Small appliances like this, I've always been fascinated. I like miniature anything. These metal ones are right out of the 50s wizard just like mom's wolverine and it even works you can press those and the door shut and open them right up it does everything except actually keep something cold but it's got room for your ice cubes and your butter and all the good stuff wolverine was out of pittsburgh and they were a big toy maker in the 1930s 40s and 50s era my neighbors have a lot of barware, which is something I collect and also buy and sell. And they've got some cute sets here. I always like these in the little bales. This is 1930s after Prohibition ended. Shot glasses were tall and narrow like this. And the ring pattern was a popular depression glass pattern with the fired on colored rings. Anchor Hawking came out with that right before the depression started. 60 bucks on that set, 40 on the polka dots. This might have to go back to Kentucky. This is my old Kentucky home, the State Shrine in Bardstown, where you will learn all about Stephen Foster, who created the song based on his trip to Florida when he was very homesick for Kentucky. Now we have a bunch of people from Kentucky who are down here for the season to stay warm. $12. These are Coco Joes, made in Hawaii. This is reconstituted lava rock ground in with resin. There's the Coco Joe's mark. Ray Murray, who designed the gloss pastel and other lines for Bauer pottery in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, ended up working for Treasure Craft in the 60s, and then this was the last company he worked for. So he did a lot of the Hawaiian designs for Treasure Craft. Lots of cocktail shakers. I like this one. 
I have not seen this one with the camels. I guess you're supposed to be thirsty enough to need a drink. $55 on that. Cool Lucite seahorses and other figures. This stuff really sells well. It was all Florida roadside souvenirs. A lot was made at House of Shells in Fort Myers. Sometimes you'll see their tag. This one's Design Gifts International. Once it got popular, they started making them other places. A couple of plateau mirrors here. These were popular around 1900 to put jewelry or pretty objects like this blown glass you were on. But this one's different because it's copper tone and it's in really good condition. Not a lot of scratches. Hello, everybody. And we see the lovely little poppies there and the tin on the bottom. $75. They really do typically sell for about that price these days. Well, these people are having a half off sale. We wouldn't usually see that on the first day of the show, but they're getting close to retirement. And we're also looking at, well, some rain. Sterling gasoline, $5. That's actually kind of a neat measuring cup from about 1950. Bunch of bicentennial era zombie glasses with the gold. Some Fostoria Jamestown. Lots of pretty red. I sold a lot of red today, and this one's Viking glass. I sold my larger version of this, and for $12.50, that might have to go up to my booth. This one's Viking Epic as well. Interesting shape. Well, Cat is back with Dalton, and... <laughs> and she, um, she, she might have bought a few things, it looks That's like. Things. These are Jocelyn's? <laughs> yeah. Where's yours? I only bought like three things. Wow. That's mostly Jocelyn's. Oh my gosh. Well, it's a good thing they have a big truck. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.